A lot of people think that if you're a really extraordinary dance company, you can't be a really extraordinary community partner or you can't be an extraordinary engagement partner. Um, they think that these two things can exist at the same time. And for Conta Tiempo, we feel that our engagement process is inextricably linked with our creative process. Those two things cannot exist separate and apart from each other. And what that means for us is that our creative work is fueled by our community work. Wait in the water, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait, wait in the water, wait in the water. We found a really cool and creative way to allow the community to kind of get a um, a look, a sneak peek into the kind of work that we're in the process of doing. So what we've done is we have selected several spaces throughout the um, greater Los Angeles area and um, partnered with some really amazing partners. People who are working with the same values and the same ideas, the kind of work that Contra Tiempo does. Well, at the wooden floor, we have an approach to dance, a, sp a specific um, belief that dance can ignite many, many things in a young person's soul, including a spiritual experience, uh, creativity, um, well-being, joy, and a, a place to be themselves, to be safe, to be co in community, and. Uh, all of these benefits allow us to take a young person that has the odds stacked against them into a person whose life might be full and productive. So we try to level the playing field by giving them the opportunity to express themselves in the studio. Who they are and what they say really matters. Our community partners give us access to uh, directly link with folks who are connected to the different spaces where we're working. So we're not just going into a space and doing a choreographic lab, but a, um, through our relationship with the community partner, we know that there are people that will be linked in and connected to the work that we're doing. They create that bridge um, to have new people be exposed to our work, to introduce us to uh, potential uh, audience members, students, people who are excited and interested in the kind of things that we're doing uh, with dance. Um, and also for us to be able to link to um, different neighborhoods and different populations all over Los Angeles. We start the choreographic labs with um, about 15 minutes or so of the actual performance itself. Um, just kind of snippets that we've come up with, sort of works in progress and move into um, allowing the community to actually dance with us and engage with us and try on some of this movement for themselves. Um, and shortly after that, we story circle. So we gather together and we talk about um, issues that are relevant around um, water and race and all of the different things that come up as the lab is happening. I remember being in the eighth grade um, and I went to a predominantly black elementary school and I remember a lot of my friends and I were on our way walking to a field trip but we didn't take the bus, we didn't drive, we all walked there and it started to rain. And I don't know if you've seen black girls with pressed hair in the middle of rain. Um, we were all like looking really silly and ridiculous <laughs> just trying to like block the water. And clearly it didn't mean anything to me then. And like, we were safe, our hair was fine. <laughs> but as I grew up, I realized that like, this is really like a deeper, I guess, perception of water that it reveals a lot of truth. It washes, mm. when you wash your face, it reveals what's really there. You wash yourself, you cleanse yourself with water. And I think it's crazy that we were just I don't know. I know it seems quite minute that all these girls are just running away from water, but it's kind of like they're running away from their true selves. Um, mm. So, yeah. And that's just my connection with it. I don't have anything against like press air because I do it so
my relationship with Contratiempo really began, um, as I think it should, in seeing their work. I brought a, a, a group of students uh, to the Skirball Center. I think they were performing one of their first pieces, um, I Dream America. And I just remember feeling just impacted as an edu a young educator at that time about the possibilities of really talking about um, complex issues but through the performing arts. And ever since then I've been, um, I've always found ways to connect what she does to what I do in the classroom. And I'd like to apply that. Those of you who are not yet in my class but will be, um, start thinking about how to really um, note these patterns, contrasts, shifts, any kind of symbols that you might see, and any questions. Thumbs up if you have I have been incredibly grateful about their generosity and their ability to um, really speak into the learning process that I am trying to create for my students and um, and allow us to speak into their process as artists themselves and um, one of the metaphors of that I've learned from them is the rueda and the circle and the, the equality of that circle and how everyone really can speak into the community of art making and learning and I've always felt that that's not just um, a slogan for what their work does but they really do act on it next is we're going to actually uh, split up in smaller groups and in those smaller groups um, we're going to share and you're going to find in your small group either a, a children's song, a nursery rhyme, a hand game, a something from childhood and then you're going to actually find a way as a group to abstract that game. First of all, to be able to learn underneath, you know, a strange water tower contraption, play in the sand, and then talk about the environment and how that we interact with it, is just a learning experience that is, I think, pretty rare. When we were doing this laboratory with these high school students, we were playing around with children's games and how um, so in so many children's games, there are these ideas of like yours and mine and you're in and you're out and I'm not in and you're out and well, all that, you know, kind of back and forth that is it happens on the playground in the schoolyard. And one of the groups wound up creating this piece where that's what they were doing. They were drawing all these lines and then they started playing where they were drawing the lines and then kind of passing energy between the different boxes that were drawn and the energy got passed and passed and passed and the intensity and intensity sort of built and the passing of energy actually started turning into an arm straightening which then started turning into this thing that looked like a gun which then started turning into actually something that actually made someone have to drop like down and this piece that got generated through a, a collaboration between high school students responding to some of the work that they had seen us do but bringing in their own ideas actually wound up on stage with us so we're doing um you know a version inspired by this movement study that actually grew out of a laboratory with high school students which is so exciting to me because it it it's not something that i necessarily would have made up but it's something that made so much sense in the things that we're tackling and working with and playing with as dancers and as as artists and it was really something that came out of a movement conversation with young people around the work. So, and it's wound up on stage with us. The idea is that they, the, these folks who are participating, um, wind up becoming part of the work itself and also wind up being a part of the premiere in January and continue to be a part of our community of Contratiempo as we continue to grow as a company and do more work.